So I'm saying it is strange to introduce you because I've known you for so long, but Rob Harris, you have a new book and I have been inside of your life for the past few days reading the book. <laughs> oh, have you? The Trouble well, with Love in the Movies is the title. That is it. That is it. I have a copy of the book here. There it is. Okay. Okay. So t first off, the title. The title is, is um, uh, somewhat ambiguous because it could mean love on screen or off screen, but um, this is behind the scenes. Um, the, uh, uh, the trouble with, with living the life that we in film production and uh, you bon vivants who, who uh, uh, follow us and, and do your journalistic duty um, live and the, the, the difficulties and uh, opportunities and uh, uh, complexities therein. Well, we, you know, people always, they're used to what they think the movies are like. This book really tells you what it's like behind the scenes because we often get that Hollywood version of, okay, cut, and then everybody walks <laughs> off and everything's fine. But it is quite different. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Yes, it is. It's, it's um, uh, you know, you don't write a book you don't write a book like this. You don't write a book unless you can be honest or you shouldn't. And what I wanted to do was to show, um, you know, the dirty fingernails and the, um, uh, um, the unwashed minions and uh, <laughs> film, film crews, the euphemism for film crews. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, and the, the, um, the life everybody thinks of it, as you said, it, everybody thinks of it as glamorous and exciting. And it certainly on one level is. Uh, it's also a bunch of people working 12 hour days, sometimes six day weeks, um, far from home and everything that they know to, to bring uh, that thing that we call a movie into uh, your homes or your theaters. And it is amazing the toll that it does take on people's lives because you are away. You're, you're, you're with a certain group of people all the time. You're away from home. You're on location. And that does not sound easy at all, especially in reading this book. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a uh, again, the, the, uh, I, would, I would be disingenuous if I said it wasn't a life full of perks and that there are lots and lots of people who would, who would trade places with anybody who complains about it. But, um, yeah, it's not easy, and it's not for everyone. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it takes a certain... Uh, vagabond personality, I think, to, um, uh, it's like, it's like the circus. It's like, you know, uh, we're circus folk. Right. I mean, a camera uh, instead of, of uh, uh, lions a whip in a chair. So when things are start out in this movie, in this book, your marriage not going well at the time. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult to sustain. And, and, I think I'm, I'm fairly clear. If not, I'll make it clear here. It's no knock on my wife. It's the difficulty of keeping my ex-wife, uh, keeping a, um, a relationship intact when you um, don't see each other that much. And, you know, the, the, the difficulty also in explaining what you do to someone who is not there um, doing it or, or who has no working familiarity with it. And um, it takes its toll. It's a, um, again, it's, it's a, a great life in so many different ways, but it can be a wrecking ball for marriages. Right. And father of two sons, too. Being away from your boys had to be that, difficult. That, that was probably the most difficult part. I mean, I, but in looking back, it's interesting because you know my kids. But in, in looking back, I find that I missed, I missed them. I missed, not that they didn't miss me, but I missed those, those moments with them. What they remember were the moments that we were together. So for any traveling parent, um, I would say keep that in mind, that um, when, you, when your children get older, what they will remember aren't the moments that you missed together, but the moments that you were together. Agreed. Okay, so take us through. Now, you have this glamorous job and when you're writing this does it not strike you like wow i've had a really incredible life i've been in amazing places and worked with great people 
tell anybody. <laughs> I'm telling everybody. And they're going to read the book, so they're going to know. But talk about some of the movies and the places around the world you've, you've been and in the book that we, that we read about. Uh, in the book, I'll, I'll narrow it down. Uh, we start off on the movie Troy, which shot in uh, the UK, um, Morocco, I'm sorry, uh, the UK, Malta, and um, uh, the tip of Baja, California in Cabo San Lucas. Um, the, we move on to Los Angeles, uh, which was a location for me because I was living in upstate New York at the time. So. Um, uh, while I was raised in Los Angeles and it's familiar territory to me, it was still away from home and family and, um, and stuff, all my stuff. And uh, so that was Lemony Snicket, uh, a series of unfortunate events. And then I took another job in Los Angeles, a Serenity, I think a, an underrated movie that um, um, those who saw the, the series Firefly, that Joss Whedon direct, created and directed, uh, might remember. Uh, and from there, uh, we we're off to, I was off to Syriana um, with George Clooney. Um, they started filming in Texas. I joined them a couple of weeks late in Baltimore and Washington, DC. From there, we went to Geneva and I actually, I had to leave the Geneva part out of the book, you know, that was, that, that, uh, that was, it was a wonderful part of the experience, but the damn book was just too long. Okay. <laughs> the editor said, you know, cut some, cut, cut uh, 40,000 words, so Geneva had to go. But from there we went to Morocco, uh, from there we went to Dubai. Um, tell me when this travelogue gets boring. No, how can it get boring with those locations? <laughs> uh, then came Jarhead, and Jarhead was mostly in the Imperial Valley in Southern California. And if you've never been to the Imperial Valley, don't go. Uh, really, you're really not missing. <laughs> <laughs> so this book is a warning, not just a travelogue, but a warning of where not to go. <laughs> it's a cautionary tale all the way through, yeah. Uh, and explain to everyone what, what you do on a movie set, what your job entails, because, you know, you see that credit at the end, publicist, but people don't really know all that goes into that. Talk about that a little bit. Sure. It's a job mostly, uh, during production, it's a job mostly of gathering materials, making sure that the studio or the distributor um, has the uh, proper photos, the written material, the behind the scenes material with which to promote the movie. Um, so my job is somewhat supervisorial in that, in that capacity. I also will write a press release um, when it's needed to announce something about the movie that we want to let out. Uh, I am somewhat of the gatekeeper, um, the, the, the guardian <laughs> of, of uh, the palace to, to make sure that, that no unwanted, uh, and not, I'm not a security man. I, I, I have to tell that to people. I'm not, I don't have a badge. I don't have a gun, thank God. Um, you know, I'm, I don't keep people out physically, but I try to, um, uh, uh, because a lot of people request visits and you can't have everybody or it turns into a, a theatrical performance, which a movie production is in some ways, but it's not open to the public. So um, yeah, I have to sort through visitation requests um, I am the conduit between the studio and the production so that each knows what the other wants and each knows to some degree what the other is doing. Um, so it's all of those things. It's, it's um, uh, also dealing with, with um, uh, local uh, dignitaries and um, uh, cutting through some of that, um, hosting those who are helpful to the film. Well, and uh, also, let's not forget, when something goes wrong, unfortunately, it's it's on your shoulders to come up with the statement or what to let people know. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of calling the publicist, let him fix it, or her. Um, but um, you know, it's it's a collaborative thing. I mean, you were the one. Uh, in fact, that's one of the parts of the job I like the best is you're collaborating with people at all levels of the filming, from you know the the most menial job on set through to the, the, uh, the stars, the producers, um, um, the filmmakers, 
uh, and the studio that's put up all the big bucks to have the film made. So it's it's that um, the, it's it's a it's a communications job. Um, in some ways, I am the information officer on set. And what I like about this book is okay. So we see that side of it, but then an incredible woman comes into your life. <laughs> Uh -huh. And with this backdrop around the world of all these different locations, as this romance blossoms and flourishes. Yes, yeah, that's um, uh, um, that's the introduction of um, how you you try to to, to uh, uh, how do you hit a moving target? How do you keep a romance alive when? you're gallivanting all over the world with um, you know a couple of hundred of your newest best friends um so that's i think the heart of the book i mean to me the book is a love story and um and it's it's a um a meditation on love marriage and family uh set against the backdrop of six film productions over three years unbelievable yes and and, and you know, when you're writing this and it's all, all done, do you say, oh, wow, it has been a great life. Or, and, and there's much more to live, but what a great experience this whole thing has been. Oh, Gino, yeah, it really has. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so privileged and so lucky to have done this for, you know, 30 odd years. And now I am following around that, that um, um, wild, free-spirited journalist who is now my wife and she's doing the job. So That's I, get to be, I get to be her assistant. I get to be her coffee. <laughs> That's okay. That's so okay. I can your coffee, dear, is my main, my main job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and let's just talk about some of the names. We, we didn't mention Brad Pitt, Peter wow. O'Toole, George Clooney, Jim Carrey, Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Oh, uh, James, uh, Jamie Foxx, um, um, uh, Leo DiCaprio. Um, Jaiman Hansu, um, um, the, 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 uh, the rogues gallery goes on. Yes, but uh, read the book. There are so many things that, you know, yeah. I love this side by side. The, you know, those who love movies and movie stars will have that part, but then watching what happens with your love life and your romance and eventual marriage. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it, it it tells a tale that, that I hope is much more universal than that sounds. Um, you're dealing in a rarefied atmosphere, but you're also, you're dealing with all of the, the, the complications of a budding romance and discovering and, and, and recovering from, from a divorce, recovering from a wound. Um, and you're, um, you're finding out a lot about yourself. And I think that relationships are the best way to do that to uh, it's a journey of discovery so. and this is not a fertile ground for a relationship the the occupation that you had no no it's 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 um um you know like um, um trying to plant vegetables on an airplane tarmac you know <laughs> For the first round, it's not. Right. <laughs> but, it is, but in some ways, it's, um, it is a very uh, a fertile ground for romance, romantic settings, romantic situations, um, you know, things happening fast and furious and, and, uh, um, and with um, interesting twists and turns. But at the end of the movie, when they call rap, you have to go back to your humdrum life and wait for the next call or the next adventure to start and um, there's a wonderful thing I didn't write about this but the, um, uh, somebody told me about something called hedonic adaptation have you heard of that I have not uh, that basically when you you've had a certain high you've gotten a raise in your job you've gotten a promotion you've you know um, uh, met a new you know partner a new a new perspective mate uh, and you're so excited and then it kind of levels off that you're you adapt to that and then you say okay well what have you done for me lately <laughs> what's next <laughs> right right yeah yeah uh the, is that all there is syndrome peggy lee yeah the most depressing song of all time by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it> really is. <laughs> and and uh i would be remiss in not mentioning you know uh your sons casey and sam 
I think things turned out great for them. Can you tell everyone <laughs> they who did. your sons are? <laughs> they did okay. They they um um they worked very very hard and struggled and worked three jobs and and sang and played in, in you know dives to five people. Uh, but they uh, became the ex ambassadors um, who have had some you know uh, relative success in the music business, which is yes. an easy thing. Wonderful. Hold that book up one more time. I want everyone to see it. You can get it right now on Amazon. I guarantee you, if you love movies, if you're a romantic, you will like this book. Rob, thank you so much, my friend. Oh, you know, it's been a pleasure. Good we'll to talk see you, more later. Sometime. Okay, sounds good. <laughs>